The Honda Fit is one of the funnest cars to drive because it feels like you're about to lose control at any second. But how aerodynamic is it? And is it more aerodynamic than its natural enemy, the Uzi? Overall, the Fit was actually quite good and there were some advanced features you might not expect on such a cheap car. For example, the hood and windshield blend almost seamlessly into each other. That means that there is pretty much no wake there in the crease between the two, which we get on even very high performance cars like the Ferrari 488. That isn't just good for lowering the drag, but it also helps with reducing the lift it produces. Because look at how much lower the pressure is here than over the 488, for example. We barely get above 50 pascals, but then for the 488, it's about 100 pascals. So while the fit starts behind the eight ball, because its upper surface is so curved and the bottom surface is so flat, so it's effectively like a wing and hence produces lift naturally. Things like blending the hood into the windshield really help reduce the lift. The Uzi, on the other hand, has no blending at the front at all, with the brow sticking out like a sore thumb. Literally every new section, the flow separates a little. Then the front sides are even worse. Look how big its wake is. And because each of these components are so straight up, the flow just crashes into the front of them, and we get successive regions of high pressure pushing the Uzi back. That increases the drag dramatically, so... So far, the fit definitely seems more aerodynamic than the Uzi. In fact, for the front half of the fit, the only bad part is really the very front because while the nose is quite pointy, if safety regulations allowed it, it should be pointier. Currently, there is quite a bit of flow deceleration and high pressure, but Honda did a nice job underneath where there isn't a sharp lip because look at the more gradual blending into the underbody. That means the flow stays attached nicely. Then as a result, we get good low pressure here, pulling the car down. And really, everything is nice until the diffuser, which is pretty poxy. The flow doesn't stay attached enough, and that kind of negates much of the upstream goodness because the wake, first of all, becomes quite large, and then it isn't kicked up. So a lot of the diffuser's potential for producing downforce is missed out on. The Uzi's underbody is very pronounced, and the handle really hasn't been streamlined at all. Look at how high the pressure is at the front and how low the pressure is at the back. That's a lot of drag. The wake even extends up to the stock. It's almost like the Uzi wasn't even designed with aerodynamics in mind. But unlike the Fit, the Uzi's wake is actually kicked up, which suggests good downforce, pushing it back into your hand and shoulder. But I think that's kind of just luck and not by design. Now, the Honda's roof is really good. First of all, look how curved it is, but still, the flow doesn't accelerate that much. The reason why that's so important is because the more the flow accelerates, the more the pressure will drop, and that would create lift here. We do see some low pressure still, but it could be much worse. The way Honda was able to reduce this acceleration was by the hood's angle. That's why it's so important to angle the hood so much, or at least angle back the windshield. And because the back is so high, the roof doesn't curve down at the rear that much. That means the boundary layer isn't very thick at all. As a result, the rear spoiler has a lot of energy to work with to actually perform well, which it does. It shoots the flow down, kind of like an Uzi, and that dramatically reduces the wake size and hence the drag. Now, there is one major strength of this spoiler and one major weakness. The major strength is how it has these little fins at the ends. That was really ahead of its time, and what they do is reduce the circulation around the top of the window, that reduces the drag. But on the other end of the spectrum, the spoiler has a major weakness in that it's connected to the roof and no air can get underneath it. So no matter what you do, you're going to have a large wake beneath it and that increases the drag. So just making a few openings between the roof and the spoiler for air to funnel through would help a lot. And the Uzi actually has this feature right before the end. The stock is hollowed out in the middle so the flow can get in there. As a result, the wake is much smaller. That's a nice touch. And surprisingly, the butt of the stock really shoots the flow up, further adding to its downforce. These simulations were done with the open foam, and if you're interested in learning open foam, then check out our courses right here, we have a sale on now that you might like. And looking from on top, the fit is really impressive. It's really a blocky car when you think about it, but the floor around it doesn't act like it so much. For example, at the hood, the floor wraps around it, and there is minimal wake. That is largely because it is angled enough to allow the flow to do that. The sides aren't great admittedly, there's quite a lot of wake and much of that is from the front wheels. But the rear is nice, the flow is angled in and the wake is very small. But the Uzi is way better from on top. There is minimal wake until we get to the back, in and around the stock. In terms of the intensity of drag produced, the drag orbit shows that the front wheels are the main drag producers, and sure the rear does produce a lot of drag, but that's only because of how large the face is and not because it's such an unaerodynamic area. The rear wheels are pretty decent too, at least compared to the front wheels. The mirrors are quite bad, and that's because of how flat they are at the front. Making them pointier would help, 
like we see in a lot of modern cars. And because the fit is so aerodynamic for a hatchback, its drag coefficient is only 0.35, which is better than a lot of cars that it shouldn't really be better than. The Uzi though, its main drag producer is the handle. If they angled it back a little, that would help. And because overall, very little attention to drag reduction was paid, its drag coefficient was 0.66. Now, the fit did have some good and bad parts when it came to downforce, and overall, it actually does quite well, producing only 3.9 kilos of lift, which is better than many cars. The Uzi though, as we all thought, is far better, and actually produces downforce, 5.4 grams of it. Peace amigos.